During the Great Depression of 2026, both the new government and the public are so desperate for money that the California Grand Lottery is launched. If someone kills the winner before sundown, they get to legally take their jackpot. The only rule is not to use bullets. In LA, in 2030, Sean's just won the lottery, so now he's running away from a huge crowd that wants to kill him. Sean doesn't hesitate to fight them all, quickly bringing them down before escaping by jumping over a fence. Afterward, Sean breaks into a home through the window and finds a grandmother, so he immediately takes her phone and destroys it. Outside, the drone is keeping track of everything. Sean takes a moment to regain his breath, and the lady takes out a grand lottery bolt gun to kill him on the spot. Then the lady breaks her ticket to summon the lottery team, who breaks down the door and confirms the winner is dead. She's given a huge check for $22 million and appears on TV. A month later, Katie arrives in LA to restart her acting career. In the bus, she keeps staring at a little Oscar keychain, which appears to be a memento. There's a little girl nearby, so she makes faces to make her laugh. However, the kid's father keeps mocking her daughter over the phone. Katie moves to his side and pretends to be a cop, threatening him to take him to social services if he doesn't behave. The man starts being nicer to his daughter, while an old lady comes closer to thank Katie for her services. However, when the lady leaves, Katie realizes she stole her watch. On a sign, Katie sees an ad for Lewis's protection agency and wishes she had bodyguards like that. During the ride, she notices that everyone on the streets is tense or violent, usually both. In the meantime, the media can't stop talking about the next lottery drawing, which is happening in 18 hours. Ticket sales have broken new records, and the next jackpot is for $3.6 billion. At his home, Noel gets his weapons ready while singing the Ninja Turtles song. Eventually, Katie makes it to the room she rented on the internet and immediately notices her new roommate Shadi lied about the state of the place, which is terrible. Shadi herself is pretty annoying too. There are pictures of her in Katie's room. She makes tasteless jokes and she ignores her very supportive mother's calls. Shadi also has an obnoxious boyfriend named DJ who slaps Katie as a so-called prank when he hands her the house keys. The next day, Noel's ad appears on TV, offering his bodyguard services to whoever wins the lottery. When Katie wakes up, she's horrified to discover the upstairs bathroom has been leaking through the roof and has ruined her clothes. She calls Shadi to complain since she has an audition in a few hours, but Shadi's only way of helping is renting her clothes. Katie has no choice but to start expending her savings on an awful outfit and taking a cab because she's late. The driver keeps making inappropriate comments and chats about celebrity gossip, mentioning that the famous rapper Machine Gun Kelly has his own bunker. When Katie makes it to the place, an employee charges her $400 to participate. Her audition finally begins, and she explains she was in many TV ads as a kid, but she had to pause her career to take care of her sick mom. After her mother died, Katie decided to try acting again. She reaches into her pockets for her monologue notes and finds Shadi's lottery ticket, which activates when Katie accidentally puts her thumbprint on it. It captures her photo and officially registers her as a player. Katie quickly puts it away and tries to act. However, she's immediately disliked and kicked out. In the corridor, the other actresses try to be supportive. Suddenly, all their lottery tickets activate announcing that Katie has won and even showing her face. The actresses immediately change their attitude and attack Katie with any object they can reach, although some of them have knives ready. Even the workers join the fight. Katie defends herself thanks to her stage fighting classes and dodges a flying shoe before taking the stairs, not understanding what's going on. On the next floor, Katie manages to hide in a room while the actresses run off. However, She's entered a self-defense class, and these people are ready to kill her too. They keep calling her my jackpot as they attack, and Katie runs around dodging their moves or causing them to hit each other. She tries asking what's happening, but they ignore anything she has to say. While some of the people are fighting each other, Katie is punched and grabbed by her ankles. The guy whirls her around and throws her through a wall making her land in a yoga class with more people ready to kill. The self-defense guys cross over too, and chaos takes over the room, 
where blood is starting to spill. When a man grabs Katie by the neck, Noel suddenly bursts through the ceiling, saving her by throwing the guy at the wall. Then Noel announces Katie gets five free saves, but afterward his protection costs 10% of the prize. As he counts all the people he keeps bringing down and reaches the end of the freebies, Katie has no choice but to sign his contract. Now he starts fighting people for real, even using Katie as a weapon to kick them off. He also ties her to his back to keep her safe, and uses a belt as a whip to attack from afar. Once all the opponents are down, Katie frees herself and takes Noel's paralysis dart gun. After easily taking it back, Noel makes sure to put the unconscious bodies in the right position so they won't choke on their tongues. He explains that the lottery drone, which is already outside, posts the winner's location every 14 minutes, so they must get going. As they run out of the building, Noel points out that the rules don't allow the other players to kill each other. The people at the food truck throw a knife at her, and Noel helps her dodge it before they get in his car to escape. As the duo drives through town, people nearby receive an alert about her location and prepare to join the fight. The ice cream truck abandons the kids, and even the lady from the bus already has a grand lottery bolt gun. Back to Noel, he finishes explaining to Katie how the lottery works and is surprised she didn't know. Katie points out she and her mom would only watch movies and baking shows, but never the news because they were depressing. Soon the car is being chased by people on bikes and ATVs, so Noel brings out helmets for both of them before speeding up. A Molotov bomb is thrown on top of the car, and the roof catches on fire. But Noel keeps on driving and enters an old warehouse as the wind puts the flames off. Suddenly he turns the car around and a biker crashes against it. But then he has to keep driving through the warehouse to avoid the other bikers who start a new fire. Only leaving the city will allow Katie to quit the game. Noel shoots a guy with his dart to bring him down. Then he drives in circles as more enemies throw various objects at them. This creates a lot of dust that allows the duo to escape by pushing the car out without making noise, and the bikers don't notice until the next Molotov falls on the ground. Katie keeps insisting she wants to quit, so Noel agrees to take her to the closest quit line. At that moment, the bikers find them, and the chase starts again. An enemy jumps into the car through the back window, and Katie steals her knife. While Noel gets his darts out, however, the woman bites his arm. Noel gets the mirror and hits her with it before asking Katie to drive, ignoring her saying she can't. Then Noel moves onto the back seat to continue the fight, putting an extra helmet on his opponent before kicking her out of the car. The bikers throw another Molotov at them, and Noel forces Katie to drive through a wall to escape. They stop a car and a biker crashes while trying to dodge it, while Katie knocks out the other one with her helmet. The duo tries to leave however, the car barely moves before it breaks down because of all the damage. Katie comes out and tries running away however, Noel stops her. He explains he gets no money if she quits, but still wants to help her, because they must treat people the way they want to be treated. Suddenly Katie throws sand at his face, and manages to punch him. So Noel has to crack his nose back into place. At that moment, a police car appears. And Katie goes to the cops for help, however. The officers want to kill her too. Noel catches their teaser just in time and starts fighting them while Katie runs away. On the street, Katie hides her face behind a map while the crowd notices the drone nearby and starts searching for her. She goes into the wax museum and is surprised to hear the guard is anti-lottery so he lets her hide among the statues. Then Katie calls Shadi and requests to borrow her car. Shadi keeps asking Katie where she is, causing Katie to realize Shadi is playing too. At that moment, a statue welcomes Katie to the museum, giving away her location. Afterward, Shadi and DJ try to enter the museum, but the guard reminds them they're banned because they did the dirty with the statue. Shadi punches him to knock him out, and the couple rushes inside. Katie hears them and hides behind a statue. However, when she tries to sneak out, she's seen. DJ immediately pushes her on top of a desk, and Katie throws a bottle at Shadi's head before tossing sand at DJ's face to get him off her. Then the couple teams up to fight Katie, who defends herself with a statue's staff. When there's an opening, she tries to run, and Shadi kicks her back, causing her to lose the staff. In the next room, 
Shadi and DJ start beating Katie up with the halves of the staff. Katie retaliates by throwing statues at them, thinking it's Cher when it's actually the Kardashians. The fight continues in the horror room, where they grab any prop available to attack. After lots of struggle with movie costumes and weapons, Katie runs out as Shadi throws an axe at her. The weapon does hit, but it's fake, so it does nothing. Katie presses a button to bring down the shutter, only to remember what Noelle taught her. She fixes the guard's body so he won't choke. Then she rolls out of the museum right before the shutter closes, leaving Shadi and DJ trapped inside. A tour bus guide immediately sees her and announces her location on the microphone. Before attackers can reach her, Noelle appears in a police car and takes her away. Katie still doesn't trust him because helping her quit means not getting paid. So she thinks he'll kill her in private. As the tour bus keeps hitting the back of the car, Noelle wishes they had Bunker, and Katie remembers the taxi driver. Soon the duo shows up at Machine Gun Kelly's house, who thinks Katie wants something dirty when she asks for help. At that moment, the bus appears. So Katie gets Noelle's dark gun and forces him to open his panic room before trying to close the door. Katie and Noelle rush inside and put Kelly to sleep with a dart. A crowd gathers in the living room and an arm tries keeping the door open. So Noelle gets ready to shoot it. Thinking he wants to shoot her, Katie takes the gun and shoots a dart at the arm, forcing it to retreat and finally closing the door for good. The room is fully equipped and the duo can watch the crowd on the security camera. A wary Katie keeps the gun aimed at Noelle. So he sits by her side and shares sweet facts about himself to prove he's a good guy. Suddenly the keychain falls from Katie's pocket, and when he says it looks cool, Katie opens up. She chose to become an actress for her mom, who loved movies and celebrities. Her mother knew Hollywood could be hell, so she gifted Katie the keychain to remind her she would be proud of her no matter what. When she was younger, she made good money as a child actor but her dad ran away with all of it. Noelle is very understanding and comforting, so Katie gives him back the gun. She wants to know why Noelle would help her quit, so he explains his priorities. One is saving people's lives, and two is making enough money to keep on saving people's lives. Outside, the crowd continues to hit the door to no avail. Shadi slaps Kelly to wake him up, but nothing happens. So instead he drags him into the pool and threatens him into sharing the door password, which is the meme 6969. All this is seen by Katie and Noel, who gets angry because he has no choice but to make a call and ask for a favor. He orders something called a phone strike and rushes to put Katie's phone inside a safe. Then the duo holds the door as Shadi uses the password however. The crowd freezes when they hear all their phones ringing with an amber alert. However. This is a trap, and their phones start exploding, burning a variety of body parts. As everyone deals with their burns, Katie and Noelle come out to escape, although Noelle stops to put off the flames on someone's groin. Outside, a bunch of guards are waiting with damage-proof cars and rubber bullet guns. They only want to take Katie, but she forces them to bring Noelle as well. During the ride, Katie asks if Noelle works with these people. He explains he used to. But nowadays he's a freelancer. Moments later, they make it to headquarters, and Katie meets Lewis, learning this is his security company. She isn't impressed by him because he keeps mocking Noelle and asks to be taken out of the city. However, Lewis gives her a new phone and points out she's in the safest building in the country. He also shows off the grenades in his pocket. With only four game hours left, Lewis gives them a tour and shows them the wall with all the winners they saved although the names are anonymous and they've been lacking clients for a while. Lewis explains they charge 30% and Katie signs the contracts after getting a part of that money for Noel. Afterward, they see on the security cameras that a crowd is gathering outside, so Lewis decides it'll be safer to move Katie to a hidden underground fortress by using decoy vehicles. First, the duo gets medical care for their wounds and Noel shares more about himself. He used to be a mercenary in the private sector with Lewis, and their unit got sent all around the world to kill horrible people. One day, Noel discovered his victims weren't always bad guys, and he quit in the middle of a job. This caused the mission to fail, 
and only he and Lewis survive. Nowadays, the money he makes goes to the families of his victims and teammates. In return, Katie shares that her dad used to be her manager and made her work all day long since she was eight. When she turned 18, she told him she wanted to manage her own money, so he disappeared with it. Katie had to take care of her sick mother, who died a month ago, and left her with only $600 and a bus ticket to LA. At that moment, an employee brings a prosthetic machine. Katie puts her face inside, and the machine applies a mask that makes her look like an old man. However, Noel is worried because moving Katie out doesn't make sense and this facility is too expensive to be maintained with only 30% of the old prizes, especially if they didn't have any clients lately. After Katie changes clothes to finish the disguise, Noel finally realizes Lewis is only pretending to protect the winners to kill them in secret. Lewis takes them to a car, and Katie keeps requesting for Noel to come along, which Lewis turns down. Getting desperate, Katie kicks Lewis in the groin, and Noel uses the distraction to open the garage door. Then he shoots all the guards with his darts as the crowd rushes in. But they don't recognize Katie and ignore her. Noel drags her out and gives her the keycard he stole from a guard, telling her to run while he buys some time. More guards appear and hold Noel down, while Lewis kicks him for information. Suddenly, all the AI-driven decoy cars take off with Katie hiding in one of them so Lewis sends his people to follow them. Downtown, Katie gets her mask off and takes control of the car, so the change of route alerts Lewis's system. Meanwhile, social media is going wild because the drone has lost Katie, so if she doesn't make any mistakes, she'll be safe from pursuers until the end. This causes her to gain fans that see her as a hero. Moments later, Katie is about to leave town, but gets a call from Noel who tells her to turn around or he'll kill Noel. In fact, he keeps stabbing him, yet Noel tells Katie to save herself. After some hesitation, Katie turns the car around and agrees to meet. Meanwhile, Lewis takes Noel to an old theater and reveals that during their mercenary days, he always knew they were killing civilians. He never cared because it was easy money. Lewis admits he doesn't like to share, and that's why he killed their team while making it look like it was Noel's fault. With only 15 minutes left, Katie gets a bolt gun from the glove compartment and rushes inside the theater, finding Lewis and Noel on the stage. She threatens to self-delete so nobody gets the money, and Lewis doesn't believe her, so Katie points out he'll kill her anyway. She also shows him she's recording this for social media. That way he can't clean the fingerprints off the gun and say he did it. Katie starts ranting about the awful state of her life and almost pushes the trigger, however. Lewis finally drops the handcuff keys and asks for a deal. Katie pretends she's about to give him the gun, but kicks him off the stage instead, confirming she had been acting with Lewis out. The other players immediately start coming after Katie again. All the people she's met today appear at the theater and block every entrance. So Katie uses whatever objects she can grab to slow them down. Suddenly, Lewis grabs her leg and makes her fall before trying to kill her. A cop tries to help, however. Lewis kicks him off and continues to struggle against Katie. At that moment, a crowd bursts in. So Noel starts fighting them while still cuffed to the chair and singing the Ninja Turtle song. The chair soon breaks, giving him more freedom of movement. Katie bites Lewis and disarms him before throwing the keys at Noah, who finally frees himself. While Noel fights Lewis, Shadi appears with a katana to fight Katie, who quickly disarms her and knocks her out with a headbutt. With only four minutes left, a huge crowd suddenly enters the theater. Noel is still fighting Lewis. So Katie has to climb the stage decorations for safety. Lewis steals an axe from another player, and Noel defends himself with symbols, which helps him finally defeat his former friend. The bus lady tries to climb after Katie, so she kicks her off. Then Noel starts breaking the decoration, so people can't follow Katie. Lewis's men arrive, and half of them make a human stair for Lewis to climb, while the others tackle Noel. Lewis reaches Katie on the scaffolding and they start fighting until Katie slips. She hangs on the edge and reveals she used her keychain to activate one of his grenades, which then explodes. Lewis dies and Katie falls, however. Her fans appear with a big flag and catch her just in time. As the countdown reaches zero, Katie hugs Noel and promises to pay him 50%. The lottery people come to give her the check 
and she announces she doesn't want to be an actress anymore. Six months later, Katie and Noel are working together on a bunch of charities, like a free protection agency, a school of self-defense and stage fighting, and a center for kids with bad parents. Noel tries to open a Ninja Turtles themed pizzeria, however, he gets sued for copyright infringement. The duo also goes on a vacation on their own yacht.